Okay, hear me out. I know that everybody and their mother, kids, and dogs have a horror story about camping. Something scratched at their tent during the night. Someone woke up to weird noises. In extreme cases, someone found remnants of small animals near their tents because a coyote went to town on a raccoon that just happened to want what was in their trash because they were not cautious enough to put it far from their camp. Anyway, the point is, I don't think I know anybody who ever went camping who doesn't at least have one of those stories. And so, I'm not an exception to the rule. I too have a story to tell you about the last time I went camping. And I don't say that in an, oh, I'll be back to camping soon. No, I'm never going to camp in the woods again. You want me to go camping? Now you gotta pull me out of a grand design reflection camper or something. Tent camping, glamping, or sleeping under the stars? Huh, <laughs> that's a big no for me. You see, I went camping in the land of Nope once, and I'm not making that mistake ever again. Here's my story. See, my wife and I were young, not very rich, full of love and carelessness. We went hiking, diving, climbing, you name it, we did it. Hell, there wasn't a single thing to stop us. So on one of our famous long vacations, we decided to go camping wherever. We just decided to fill our tiny car with stuff needed for a week of camping and drive. Literally wherever, without a map just toward where we believed there was wilderness. We would set up a camp near a lake and go swim naked and just, well, you know, enjoy being young and stupid. Well, maybe not stupid, but in love and adventurous. Molly wouldn't like me to call us stupid. So we drove maybe six hours, stopped at a dirty roadside restaurant, and ate a roast beef sandwich we had trouble digesting for the rest of the drive. I remember how her smile looked during the whole road trip. And let me tell you, nobody, even today as she is 46, has her smile to beat. Molly well, must be the only woman in the entire world who knows how to smile. Or maybe, she's the only one I can see. Whatever it is, I still think I'm the luckiest man to have her. But... That's enough sap. We're not here for that. We're here because you want to hear about our last camping trip. So after six hours drive and past dinner, we finally found what looked like the space. You know, the kind of space you look at and go, hell yeah, that's where I was supposed to be. We hid the car between the trees and threw a moss green cover on the car just to camouflage it better. Then... Equipped with orange tape, our courage, and our lack of danger sense, we started trekking across the forest. The place smelled great, pine trees all over it. Plus, I remembered seeing a lake a couple of miles up. We didn't find the lake though, I doubt it was the one I saw. It was smaller, but the water was clear. We established our campgrounds about 40 feet away from the lake. I had to work quite a bit to secure our tent out there, but, but it looked like a nice and cozy spot. Plus, there was a small little beach not too far. It was a wild spot, so the beach wasn't cleared, but it was the perfect location if we wanted to start a fire that didn't put the rest of the forest at risk. Plus, we could go for our most desired skinny dipping plans. And all in all, we found paradise. She was a paradise for two very hormonal and in-love 25-year-olds. We had no cell reception, though most phones back then didn't have the best signal, even in town. No electricity, that was obvious. But we also didn't bring a generator. We wanted the whole trip to be an experience. We had stuff for the fire, a flashlight, a few batteries. But the plan was mainly to swim, eat, fuck, sleep early. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Feel me? See, it was kind of an experience that was far from the urban lifestyle we'd been used to. Just two wild animals. And honestly, well, the first three days were just 
They were amazing. Not a single cloud to piss rain on our parade. The water was fresh, the nature around us smelling amazing, and those hot dogs on the fire felt like the best goddamn meals I ever had. But on the fourth day, it rained, and it rained a lot. In fact, it rained so much that I had to put something under our inflatable mattress so our blankets wouldn't touch the ground and get soaked. It got cold pretty quick, but we found ways to get warm. We spent the entire fourth day in a humid, cold tent, moving from one personal activity to a couple activity. We used our entire set of batteries trying to read a bit, and gave up on the day before even 9pm. When we woke up the next day, I felt hungover, which was weird considering I only had a beer or two to warm myself up. I turned to look at Molly and I saw her cheeks were insanely red. When I touched her, she was burning. I was about to wake her up when I heard a loud thump against the roof of the tent. I thought a branch might have fallen, but when I looked up, I could see the shade of something the size of a kitten sitting atop our tent. No big deal, right? I mean, hell, could have been a bird. Well, I hoped for it, but I instantly felt that something was off. Way off. And then, it unfurled. It unfurled, and I felt the coldest damn shiver run down my spine. Hell, my blood turned to ice, and I felt needles prick at the skin of my nape. This wasn't good. This wasn't good at all. See, I saw hundreds of tiny legs as this gigantic centipede thing wrapped around the roof of our tent. What I didn't see was the spider climbing on the other side, unaware of the centipede waiting for it to be close enough. And close enough it got. And though the tent prevented me from seeing the gore, I heard the noises and the squelching as this massive centipede fell upon the spider like a hawk on a field mouse. There was even this disgusting yellowish stain now on the side of the tent, probably because the spider burst as it was devoured. Now I wanted to get out and kick the shit out of that centipede, but I'd just seen a spider the size of a small bird getting eaten by a centipede that was very much from my worst nightmares. I'm usually no coward. I'll fight raccoons and small animals, but... Giant insects? Nah, fuck that. I decided against waking up Molly. I knew she would freak out, but maybe I could use something inside the tent to scare the insect away. I mean, it was just a centipede. What was the worst that could happen? I was not going to wait all day long for it to move. I needed it to move. Plus... I needed to go pee. So, like any good guy with great ideas, I picked up the flashlight from the ground and hit the roof of the tent. On the list of things I shouldn't have done, this was mostly likely at the top. That moment that I slammed my flashlight to the roof, it's like I was telling it, hey, I'm here and there's definitely more meat to me than that piss poor spider you just ate. Hell, I should have just slapped my thighs and screamed come and get y'all steak, and it would have had the same impact. That centipede creature hissed at the first slam of the flashlight, and the shrillest of noises escaped the creature on the second. Now this one woke Molly up, who looked at me in confusion for two seconds before noticing the giant shadow of the monster above us. It seems that the sight of me in boxer shorts, shaking with the flashlight in my hands, not enough to calm her down, but maybe the scuttling noise of the centipede scratching at the tent was scarier than I looked pathetic. I don't know. All I know is that when she realized what in the hell was happening, she started screaming at me to do something, as if I wasn't doing just that. So with my brilliant ideas and the newly added rush of wanting to protect my girlfriend from the giant scary centipede, I decided to hit it more vigorously with the flashlight. I didn't realize that the shrill scream wasn't something centipedes usually do, but I certainly learned it 
when some tiny legs turned into claws and then started tearing at the tense fabric. Centipede Monster 1, Molly and I, 0. I think I didn't realize instantly as the first tearing noise reached my ear. I didn't know an insect could tear through a tent like a bear or any clawed animal would, and I started to realize when the tear grew bigger and I saw its disgusting brown plated body through the tear, and that's when I thought, well shit, that thing was coming in. And all I had to defend myself and my girl was a weak as hell flashlight or a kitchen knife. I didn't even have time to think though. See Molly was yelling and starting to unzip the tent windows for an emergency exit route. Honestly, not the worst idea at the moment, but that thing would soon realize the tears were giving it an opening. So I swallowed my pride and I got the cast iron pan. Now within seconds, there was this loud hiss and that monster was trying to make its way inside my tent. I didn't know if centipedes were toxic or anything but I wasn't going to let it get any closer and as soon as I saw it rear its ugly head through that hole the whack-a-mole game started. I slammed the pan towards its face as hard as I could and the vibration of its head hitting the pan reverberated across my arm and all the way up to my shoulders. That thing's head was sturdy. I could see the dent in the back of my pan. Not that I thought I would ever use it again, but still, how hard must a plated bug be to dent a cast iron pan? So I heard Molly yell in the sound of zippers again. She was screaming incoherently and sobbing at the same time. You see, I had no time to deal with that as I tried to bounce back every single attack of that enormous centipede. I mean, how could this happen in America? How could centipedes grow that big? I mean, hell, did they eat nuclear waste and mutated? Whack, whack, whack. I kept whacking off the centipede, and if I was honest, I was getting tired. I was fueled mainly by adrenaline and the screams of Molly behind me. The beast finally led up that hole, but I soon understood why Molly was screaming. You see, we were in the middle of a nest. When she unzipped the window, she found herself facing a dozen, if not more, of those creepy crawlies. All bigger than the next. The one that tried to get into our tent wasn't even the biggest, and when the shadow of the bigger one loomed over my head, obscuring the greater part of the tent and making the support poles bend and wince. Well, I knew there wasn't much left to do for us. A frying pan wouldn't save our ass, but it sure as hell meant we had to do something. We couldn't wait for them to get into the tent and turn us into their next spider meal. So I looked back at Molly. She was shaking. I remembered her smile on the road trip. I wanted to see that smile again. Now, I'm not the fittest guy ever, but Molly was only five foot tall of feathers, and she weighed nothing to me. So I put on my shoes and I turned my back to her. Then I told her to hop on my back. We were getting the hell out of this forest. I knew where the car was, and I knew that I could make it back there in 15 minutes top, even with her on my back. Ten if I was alone, but I did evaluate 15. Plus, I mean, the point was just for us to get as far away from the nest as possible. Then I'd put her back on the ground and we would run the rest of the way to the cart together. That sounded like a solid plan, especially since the chittering and clicking of the centipede's legs around us started to grow stronger. They were very aware of us in that tent. However, my plan had one fault. If I were to carry her, I wouldn't be able to defend us, so I needed her to calm down. As soon as she climbed my back, I reached for the pan and gave it to her. All she needed to do was to protect us. They could claw at our feet, try to climb us to slow us down. My job was to run, and I couldn't do both the running and the whacking. Molly wiped her tears 
and I felt her chest against my backside. It was the only boost I needed to get out of the tent and make a run for it. I didn't bother putting on pants or picking up anything other than our car keys. For all I care, all that stuff was already doomed. They could have it. You know, the centipedes, I mean. And in a matter of seconds, I opened the tent doors and I rushed outside. My feet didn't touch the ground for the first couple of steps. Then I heard the squishing noise and the worst high-pitched noise I'd ever heard. I didn't bother to look down. I could feel something warm and thick down the side of my leg. And I don't know what size that one was, but even its plated skin couldn't protect it from being squished. The clicking noise of the centipede's legs intensified as I dashed through the woods, and the sound of the cast iron pan hitting them reassured me that Molly was doing her job. I could feel something burning on my legs, on multiple spots actually, but the adrenaline kept me running. I never got her off my back, and eventually the hitting sound stopped. Finally, we reached the car, and I dropped her, and then all but tore the green cover off that car. I didn't even bother putting it back into it. I just got in, started the engine, and drove away as fast as I could. Now I stopped about 10 minutes later. See, I couldn't feel my left foot anymore, and I had to have Molly drive us to the nearest hospital. My legs were covered in cuts and bites, all more swollen than the next. I didn't lose my leg, but the doctor said I was pumped full of centipede venom, with bites in a size he'd never seen before. I spent three days in that hospital, getting pain treatments, antibiotics, hell I think I even got a tetanus shot. You know, I'm proud to say that Molly only had a slight fever and a few scratches, probably given by branches and not a centipede. So yeah, when I say I'm never going to camp in the woods again, I'm never going to camp in the woods again. See, it's fancy camping grounds with fancy camping trailers for this guy.